In the opening scene, we see Amelia at a party, walking around and checking the rooms. She sees a man lying face down in one of the rooms. She notices the blood at the back of his head and screams his name, Pierce. She calls out for help and the screen turns black. In the next scene, Barbara talks to her Pilates instructor, Amelie, about how she prefers the class to yoga. She spots Pierce Dalton, the owner of Hansworth Media Corp., and drools over him. Amelie has heard about him and Barbara continues gushing over him as well as sharing a rumor she heard about him, being a tiger in the bedroom, adding that if she's ever going to have an affair, it'll be with him. Pierce joins them and greets Barbara. She asks if he got the invite to her party, and Pierce confirms that he did. Barbara wonders why he hasn't RSVP'd. She then turns to Amelie to invite her as well. She gets a text from her daughter and leaves. Before leaving, she asks Pierce what she can put him down as, but he doesn't know yet, so she turns to Amelie and assures her that she'll send the invite via mail. After Barbara leaves, Pierce introduces himself to Amelie and says that he enjoyed the class. He mentions the advertisement, which turns out to be the opposite of what he saw in the class, as he was the only man, despite the advertisement featuring a man. He finds out that she opened the class a few weeks ago which he thinks is surprising as her class is already full. He asks where she's from and finds out that she's new in town. He wants to get a membership and notices a picture of her dog, commenting that it's as cute as its mother. Amelie smiles and gives a playful reply. She asks him to input his email address on a tablet and introduces herself as Amelie Didot. Her name reminds him of a female lead from a popular foreign movie. Amelie also knows this movie and Pierce confesses that it's his favorite film. Pierce takes his leave and just then, a woman knocks. Amelie signals to her that they're closed, but runs out to meet the woman anyway. The woman whose name is Fran, is disappointed to find out that the class has ended, especially since she saw Pierce in the class. She promises to be in the next class on the condition that there'll be more eye candies, but Amelie doesn't make any promises. She notices Fran's car which is an old model and it brings back memories for Amelie, including that of when she broke up with the guy, who then proceeded to dump soda on her car. Fran believes that men can be childish with breakups and promises to be in the class on Monday before leaving. In the next scene, Amelia is talking with an electrician who helped her install some CCTV cameras. When he leaves, her neighbor Margaret informs her that she's lived in the neighborhood for a long time and assures her that it is safe. Amelia points out that it was a free upgrade from her cable subscription, but Margaret couldn't care less. Margaret informs Amelia that she lives alone and likes babies and dogs, so Amelia reveals that she has a dog. Margaret already knows this, and she even offers to watch over her dog if she needs a dog sitter, an offer that Amelia appreciates. Later on, Amelia goes to a shop to get a new dog tie and she's asked to write down her address. Buster, Amelia's dog, runs out of the shop, but she doesn't notice until she's done writing. She runs out of the shop, calling out to Buster. In the next scene, Amelia goes to her Pilates class, heartbroken that she wasn't able to find Buster. Just then, Pierce walks into the class, holding her dog. Amelia hugs Buster as soon as she sees him. She wonders how Pierce knew it was him, so he shows her the portrait on her desk. Pierce had found Buster eating an ice cream cone at a park and decided to take him to get something healthier. He drops some dessert on the table and Amelia beats herself up for losing her dog. She wants to reward him but he refuses, but later settles for private sessions when she continues insisting. A message pops up from someone saying they found Buster, so she decides to take the post down. She notices that time has passed and Pierce guesses that she skipped her lunch, so he insists on getting her something. Amelia refuses his offer but he's just as stubborn as she is, so she gives in. Later, Pierce and Amelia are at a restaurant, enjoying some drinks. He finds out that she's divorced without children. He can tell from her face that the marriage did not end well. Amelia thinks that he asks a lot of questions, so he reminds her that he's a journalist, adding that she doesn't have to talk about it if she doesn't want to, but she decides to tell him that her husband cheated on her. Just then, the waiter walks in to get the bill and Pierce pays despite her insistence on paying. On their walk back, Amelie finds out that Pierce has never been married, and he also has no kids. Although, he had dated someone recently, who turned out to be intense, so he had to break up with her. Amelie is curious as to what he means by intense, and he explains that they once had a double date with a colleague of his and his colleague's wife, whose name is Dolores. When the date ended, he was accused of flirting with Dolores by his girlfriend. Pierce adds that the woman he was accused of flirting with was over 71 years old and old enough to be his mother. Amelie wonders if he broke up with her after that, so Pierce decides to tell her more backstory. According to him, his company had hired her tech firm to manage their social media, and his ex-girlfriend started tracking him online. She would bring up his online activities and accuse him of flirting with people. The straw that broke the camel's back was when he found her in front of his house after returning from a run and she was angry at him for changing his running route. He broke up with her after, realizing that she wasn't the one for him. Just then, they get a reminder from Barbara. The theme of the party is eyes wide shut, which explains why Pierce is hesitating to RSVP. Also, because it's a wild party and she only knows two people, Amelia is hesitant to go. Pierce asks her to go to the party as his date, as long as he can keep his clothes on. Amelia looks at him, confused, so he reminds her of the theme. 
He gets her number and asks what her favorite song is. He sets a theme song for her on his phone and she likes it. They agree to meet at 7 p.m. for the party. The next day, Pierce shows up at Amelie's house to pick her up. She's looking gorgeous and Pierce compliments her. He also gives her a bouquet of roses that she appreciates. At the party, the attendees are all wearing masks. Amelia is holding two glasses and offers one to a man, thinking he's Pierce. She apologizes for the misunderstanding and walks away. She finally finds Pierce and just then, Barbara and her husband, Frank, walk up to them. Barbara confirms her suspicion that Amelie came to the party as Pierce's date. Amelie marvels at how big and beautiful their house is, and Frank comments that his wife has refused to move. Pierce asks for permission to show Amelie around and leads her away. During their tour of the house, Amelie notices that there's a lot of art everywhere. Pierce informs her that Barb is the great-granddaughter of Roald Gershwin, a minimalist artist from the 1920s. They look at one of the art pieces, which has a man carrying a woman in a bridal style while having a barely readable expression. Pierce asks what she thinks is going on in the piece. Amelie thinks that the man asked for forgiveness and the woman granted it. She asks what Pierce's perspective is. He thinks it looks like the woman is exhausted and the man saved her. Pierce guesses that Amelie was hurt by her ex-husband and she confirms that she was indeed hurt. So much so, that she became someone who finds it hard to trust people. Pierce then tells her that she's beautiful and kisses her, before continuing the tour, their next stop being the ladies' room. Pierce decides to get some appetizers for them and they agree to meet in five minutes. Amelie goes to the bathroom and touches up on her makeup. She almost runs into a woman on her way out and apologizes. The woman is acting suspicious and runs away. Amelie ignores the woman and continues walking. Then, she sees a man lying face down on the floor, blood on his head, and unconscious. This brings us back to the opening scene as Amelie screams Pierce's name and calls out for help. Pierce, Barbara, and Frank show up, confusing Amelie. Meanwhile, Barbara starts tearing up and hyperventilating upon seeing the man. The police show up and the detective gives Amelie his card, in case she remembers anything. Amelie spots a ring on the deceased man's finger and remembers that the man she had mistaken for Pierce earlier on, also had the same ring. Pierce interrupts her train of thought as he takes her away from the scene. In the next scene, Amelie is teaching a Pilates class and Fran can be seen there too. She goes over to where Barbara is and she asks to speak with her after the class, throwing a glance in Fran's direction. After the class, Fran walks up to Amelie to let her know that she enjoyed the class. Amelie informs her that she has a promo class going on, and advises her to sign up for it. She notices a drill in Fran's bag and Fran just says that it's for a project she's working on. Just then, Barbara walks past them and Amelie stops her. Barb tells her that she has to go, but promises to call her later. When Fran greets Barbara, she doesn't get a proper reply from her. Amelie turns to Fran and tells her that she can sign up for any class she decides to go with. Fran doesn't leave immediately. Instead, she continues smiling half-heartedly at Amelie, who decides to inform her that she has a private session that is about to begin. Fran finds out that she gave free private sessions to a guy who helped her find her dog. While picking up the nearby portrait, she asks Amelie if it was the guy she saw at the last class. Amelie confirms that he's the one, and Fran slams the picture on the table, breaking the glass. She's visibly annoyed and walks out, leaving Amelie confused. Amelie cleans up the glass pieces on the floor and Pierce walks in, wondering what happened. Amelie tells him what happened and asks if there were any leads on the case. He informs her that the police are keeping the case quiet, adding that he has to wait for more information before he would be able to publish an article on the incident. Amelie wonders if he has ever covered a murder case before and he confirms that he has, although it didn't happen close to him. She calls it a bad dream and mentions that Barb didn't look at her during the class, making her suspect it is because of the incident, but Pierce doubts it. He had found out that the man, Brian, was a friend of Frank, so the news of his demise must have shaken them up. He puts a bandage over a cut on her finger and advises her to forget about it. They begin the private session and Amelie guides him carefully. Pierce finds it difficult to do one of the steps. Amelie shows him how to do it while he holds her tense butt. There's sexual tension between them and Pierce gives in, sliding his palm across her waist but is soon interrupted by a deliveryman walking in to drop a package. They both spring up and Amelie apologizes for not closing the door. She feels ridiculous and Pierce confesses that he can't stop thinking about her. Amelie smiles softly and looks him in the eye. He invites her to have dinner at his place and she agrees as they round up the class. Pierce fights the urge to kiss her and takes his leave. In the next scene, an employee named Dale asks Pierce if he's seen the draft of the mansion murder. Pierce doesn't want them to write an article on it and asks that they only publish information that the police release. Dale assures him that she's doing just that, and adds that she'll be changing the headlines. She asks him to check the draft and leaves. Pierce takes a look at it and sees a shocking sight. Amelia is the headline and a picture of her is also attached. He calls Dale back to ask about the article. It is riddled with misinformation, stating that Amelia is romantically involved with the deceased, and that she also runs a sex ring. Dale isn't aware of the article he's reading and swears that she didn't write it, adding that she doesn't even know Amelie. She believes that their system has been hacked and Pierce instructs her to erase the file, as well as change the passcode. 
However, she doesn't know how to change the passcode, so he instructs her to get someone from the tech department. In the next scene, Barbara and Amelia are having drinks at a restaurant and talking about the incident. Barbara brings up Fran and Amelia tells her that she broke her picture frame. Barb warns her not to let her anywhere near her, and informs her that Fran is Pierce's ex, asking if he knows that she was there but left before he arrived. Amelia wonders how Barb knows Fran, but Barb clarifies that she doesn't. She just met her when Pierce was on a date with her, and the next day, she got a message from Fran, asking to meet up. Barb thought she got her number from Pierce and agreed to meet up. The meeting began well but Barb soon realized that she was trying to dig up information on Pierce. Meanwhile, Fran is shown blasting music in her car outside the restaurant Barbara and Amelia are in. Back in the restaurant, Barb mentions that Fran brought up the fact that she kissed Pierce on the cheek, suspecting her of having a past relationship with Pierce. She makes it clear to Amelia that Fran is obsessed with Pierce. She also found out later that Pierce didn't give Fran her number and wasn't even aware they were meeting up. Barbara is sure that she saw her at the party, but wasn't able to confirm it. She warns Amelia to be careful, adding that Fran must have noticed Amelia if she was at the party. Fran watches from her car as Amelia and Barbara hug and say their goodbyes, going their separate ways. On her walk home, Amelia runs into Fran who's waiting in her car. Amelia is surprised to see her. Fran offers her a ride but she turns her down, feeling uncomfortable. Amelia asks if she lives around the area but Fran makes up something about her favorite pizza joint being in the area. A car pulls up and Amelia informs Fran that it's her cab. Fran claims that she's trying to help her to save money, but Amelia is adamant, so Fran drives off. Amelia watches her drive away with a scared expression. In the next scene, Amelia goes to Pierce's house. He opens the door and welcomes her into his humble abode, which is a beautiful mansion. He leads her into the kitchen and gives her a glass of wine, as well as a little snack. Then he confesses that he miscalculated the timer, so it'll take some time before dinner would be ready. Moments later, they decide to go on a tour of his house. Pierce asks how the dinner with Barb went and she informs him that Barb told her to be careful of his ex, Fran. She reveals that the woman who broke her frame is Fran. Naturally, Pierce is alarmed that she came to Amelie's class. He informs Amelie that he had to take out a restraining order on Fran. Still, Amelie thinks she's just having a hard time letting go, confessing that she also did some research on her ex-husband's new girl. Pierce says it's different, but Amelie thinks she just needs time. He makes her promise that she'll tell him if she returns. After dinner, Amelie commends the food and offers to help clean up, but Pierce doesn't let her. She thinks it's weird that his fire alarm is triggered and he admits that it was the first time it got triggered, adding that he got it recently. Amelie confesses that having a CCTV makes her feel like she's an elite. Amelie picks up her purse and notices that a pen has exploded in her bag, which she finds weird. She sees a message from her ride and Pierce mentions that he could have given her a lift, but Amelie thinks it'll lead to something they're not prepared for. He thanks her for spending time with him, and she thanks him for the comfy change of clothes as they lean in for a kiss. In the next scene, Amelie returns home, feeling like something is off. She goes into the house anyway and calls out for Buster, going around the house until she finds him. She pets him and notices that he's covered in something sticky, but she brushes it off. Just then, the front door slams shut, spooking Buster. While Amelie tries to calm her dog down, thinking it was the wind. She serves Buster some dog food and notices that his water bowl is filled with orange soda. She recalls telling Fran about the incident with her ex-boyfriend and she becomes alarmed. She dials 911 but ends the call. The next day, Amelie receives a call from Pierce who tells her to lock her doors, and not to open them for anyone, informing her that he's on his way. Amelie gets up from her bed and opens the door for Pierce. He asks if she can watch the security footage on her phone, so she gives him her phone. However, Pierce sees that it is not activated. Amelia must have forgotten to activate the CCTV. She tells Pierce that she ran into Fran the previous day, and he concludes that Amelia was being followed. He informs her that his security footage caught her in the house, adding that she took a pen out of her ear while staring into the camera. Amelia immediately remembers how a pen exploded in her bag and she never carried a pen in her bag again. She's now sure that Fran was in her house. They realize that they're both being followed and Pierce calls the investigator in charge of the case, Kip. The call doesn't go through, so Pierce leaves a voicemail. After that, they decide to go on a walk. During the walk, Amelia and Pierce talk about their childhood. Amelia admits that she's scared and Pierce blames himself for getting her tangled in his mess. Suddenly, Buster begins to act a little tense and Amelia thinks the dog needs to pee. So, Pierce takes Buster, leaving Amelia alone as she stares at the horizon. Suddenly, she's hit on the head and the screen goes blank. In the next scene, Amelia regains consciousness at the hospital. A doctor attends to a confused Amelia, who doesn't remember anything that happened after getting hit on the head. The investigator is also present and wants to ask her some questions. He asks if there was anyone she didn't know, or something that was peculiar. Amelie struggles to answer the question, but soon remembers the strange woman she ran into on her way out of the bathroom. She realizes that the woman wore the same earrings Fran always wore and is sure that Fran was at the party. In the next scene, Amelie drops Buster at Margaret's house and asks her to call if anything goes wrong. 
but Margaret doesn't plan on doing that since she doesn't want to ruin Amelie's weekend away with Pierce. Margaret asks Amelie to help her dump some whitish powder in the garbage, explaining that she found it in her bathroom, suspecting that a mouse was trying to dig a hole. She then asks if Amelie got her house checked for rats. She feels no need to because she is sure that Buster would have found it if there was one in her house. She throws the powder away and leaves with Pierce. In the next scene, Amelie and Pierce arrive at one of his parents' houses. Amelie wants to know the reason Fran is having a hard time letting go of him. He simply believes that Fran has an obsessive behavior that needs treatment. The next day, Amelie dresses up and informs Pierce, who's making breakfast, that she's going to the beach to pick up some seashells. He then suggests that they go snorkeling later on. At the beach, Amelie is enjoying the feel of the sand against her feet, and the cool breeze, when Fran shows up. Amelie is frozen in shock as she approaches her. Fran weirdly talks a bit about herself before leaving. As soon as she leaves, Amelie runs back to the house and calls out to Pierce, who runs to check on her. She informs him that she saw Fran and they hurry back to the house to pack up. They gather their stuff and Amelie sees a message on her phone. On their way back, Pierce calls an investigator and they're advised to stay safe. Amelie gets a message from Margaret, saying that she locked herself out of Amelie's house with Buster inside. But the surprising thing is that Amelie didn't give Margaret a key to her house. A few moments later, they arrive at the house in question. Margaret apologizes to her. Pierce asks Margaret how she got into the house and she says that an exterminator opened it for her. Upon hearing this, Amelie bolts in, looking for Buster. Thankfully, she finds him. In the next scene, Dale gives Kip a thumb drive that has footage of the party. Barbara had turned off all the cameras for the privacy of her guests, but forgot to turn off the camera facing the back lane. Pierce joins them as the investigator looks at a newspaper that has Fran's name printed on it. It has been confirmed that she hacked into their system, but they still don't have enough evidence for a warrant. The investigator says that the thumb drive as well as the newspaper will help with the arrest of Fran. Before leaving, Kip reminds Pierce to be careful, promising that the police will do their part. In the next scene, we see that Amelie's Pilates class has a sign asking clients to knock first. She rounds up her class and Barbara speaks with her afterward. Barbara asks how her head is, but she's more curious about how good Pierce is in bed. Just then, Pierce walks in and hugs Barb. She leaves them to their private session. Amelie locks the door after, and it doesn't sit right with Pierce that she has to live in constant fear. He wants to talk to her about something, but struggles to say it. He gathers the courage and tells her that they shouldn't see one another again. But she disagrees. She doesn't want to lose to Fran, or be controlled by her. She clarifies that she is not scared, just annoyed. She moves closer to him and tells him that breaking up means giving Fran what she wants, which Amelie doesn't plan on doing. She asks him to kiss her and he obliges, enthusiastically. Meanwhile, Fran gets into her car and gets a notification. She sees her picture and name on the headline of an article, causing her to scream in anger. In the next scene, Amelie and Pierce clean up her house and just then the doorbell rings. She checks the security footage and sees Margaret. Margaret gives Amelie a plate of food and Amelie invites her to dinner, but Margaret turns her down because her show's finale is starting soon, adding that she has a remote viewing party with her sister. Amelie promises to give her a bowl of salad and Margaret returns to her house to start watching the show with her sister. Unfortunately, she doesn't notice that someone is in her home. Fran shows up behind her and covers her mouth with a handkerchief until she falls asleep while Margaret's sister panics. Back at Amelie's house, she checks online for any cleaning supplies she could use to clean the mirror. Meanwhile, Fran drags Margaret to the bathroom and peeps through a hole there, watching Pierce and Amelie. Pierce leaves to get something and Amelie locks the door behind him. Fran then picks up a knife from Margaret's kitchen while Amelie is on a video call with Barbara. Pierce is jogging to his destination, constantly checking around to see if he's being followed. He relaxes, but just then, Fran appears. She asks why he's being mean to her, calling Amelie a whore, as well as stating the things he's doing to make her angry. Pierce tells her that she needs to stop. Fran confesses that she thought Brian was him, admitting that she murdered him when he put his hand in her pants. She blames Pierce for not being there to protect her. Finally, he's had enough and decides to leave, but Fran warns him not to walk away all the while pulling a knife out. Not wanting anyone else to have him, Fran attacks Pierce, but he overpowers her. Fran starts screaming for help and a passerby fights Pierce off. Pierce tries to tell the man that she's a wanted criminal, but since the knife is in his hand, the man continues fighting him. Meanwhile, Amelie goes to Margaret's house to give her some salad, but Margaret isn't answering the door. She calls her, but she's not picking up. Amelie opens the door. She walks around the house, calling for Margaret, then the smoke alarm goes off. She turns off the oven and sees Margaret's phone. Amelie hears muffled whimpering coming from the bathroom and finds Margaret, who tells her to run away. Amelie tries to call Pierce but she hears the ringtone he set for her, inside the house. She drops her phone and runs away. Fran comes out, picks up the phone, and runs after her. Amelie goes into her house and sees an incoming call from the police on her laptop. Fran picks up the call on the phone and Amelie locks Buster in a room, before running out of the house, with Fran following behind. Amelie hides in a bush but Fran sees her and drags her out. 
They start fighting each other. Fran expresses her anger and claims that Pierce is hers, but Amelie tells her that he's no one's possession. The fight continues and Amelie is left unconscious in the water, waves washing over her, while Fran watches. Pierce shows up just in time and tries to get the water out of Amelie's system. Fran claims that she's the victim, but Pierce ignores her. The police show up and arrest Fran. Pierce carries Amelie, looking like the art piece they shared their views on at the party. In the last scene, Amelie teaches a class and after this, Barbara speaks with her. Amelie and Pierce are moving into a new house, so Barb teases her, saying that she snatched the most eligible bachelor in town. But Amelie adds that she had to fight for it. Barb jokingly asks if she could join the private session with Pierce. Moments later, Pierce shows up and asks Amelie if she's down for the day. She tells him she has a private session with the hot client she's been thinking about. Of course, she's talking about him. 